Now that summer is here, I am ready to head into the mountains, eager to see what illuminations await me there. After all, I dreamed of living in these mountains throughout my girlhood. I knew they had things to show me, words to kindle in my imagination. That they would also offer balm for a middle-aged poet spirit I had yet to discover. That discovery remains fresh in my memory. Driving back home last June from Knoxville, where my father-in-law lives, my husband and I decided to go through the Great Smoky Mountains and avoid the caravan of trucks heading east on I-40. After several days of rain, the afternoon was one of those well-washed summer gems. We knew the drive through the park would be cool and green. But first we had to make it through Sevierville and Pigeon Forge, two towns that thanks to Dollywood, nonstop restaurants, shops, and motels of all descriptions have been turned into the embodiment of tourist trap. There have been lines, times when it's taken us an hour, sometimes two, to get out of that trap. This afternoon, the bungee jumpers were going strong, and one lone tourist helicopter circled and buzzed like a giant bumblebee. Over to the left, I saw a sign reading, See and Feed Five Live Bears, and wondered how many tourists were seduced by that invitation. Straight ahead, the Smokies waited in their summer haze, promising an escape from the assault of language used to manipulate and exploit with its incessant invitations to see this, eat that, play this game, sleep in that motel. As we entered the park and the mountains closed around us, I still had those bears in captivity just a few miles from where they should be roaming free on my mind. As we wound our way upward toward Newfound Gap, I felt displaced as if these mountains I'd loved and driven through and hiked for years had become unreachable. Wordsworth's famous lines rang in my head with a force I had never felt when I first read them as a college student. The world is too much with us, late and soon, getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. The language of getting and spending had overwhelmed me, and I feared all of us. Our powers of observation and expression were being worn away by the onslaught of merchandising. Such dark thoughts for such a beautiful afternoon. Fortunately, just then on the roadside, a cascade of blossoms caught my eye. What is that? I asked my husband, the expert on any wildflower growing in the Smokies. Wild hydrangea, he said. Wild hydrangea. The words resonated like the names of loved places that cold mountains Inman says over and over to ward off the terrors of war. My terror? That we will lay waste our powers of loving attention to place and thereby lose our gift of language to celebrate it and take care, not only of it, but of our own inner landscape, that we will someday turn inward and find not an underground stream pulsing with the imagination's poetry, but a wasteland filled with signs advertising caged bears and caged longings. So I continue to say to myself, Wild hydrangea, wild hydrangea, like a magic charm against loss, down past Clingman's Dome, through Cherokee, along the Tuckasegee River, all the way home.